Kia ora, my name is Antje Lipke. I'm a research services librarian here at the University of Otago in Aotearoa, New Zealand. About a year ago, my colleague Justin and I were tasked with developing a service around researcher profiles for our academics here at Otago. In preparation for developing the service, we'd undertaken interviews with staff and had also started scoping researcher profile services that were being offered by other universities in New Zealand and overseas. What we found during this process was that each university takes a slightly different approach to supporting researchers with their online profiles. Some were very hands-on, for example, running impact challenges and undertaking profiles health checks for their academics, while others simply gave surface level information on a LibGuide or web page. As for the feedback we got from Otago academics in the interviews, overall there was a clear difference between those who actively seek out tools or services to promote their research and those who feel pressured into it and therefore only do the bare minimum when it comes to setting up their professional profiles or engaging with social media. A lack of time was the most cited barrier to using or maintaining online profiles, and many of our academics also didn't know which the best tools were to use. In terms of library support in this space, all the interviewees agreed that the library could and should provide this. What form they thought the support should take varied, and that ranged from face-to-face half-day workshops where staff leave with a profile or two set up for them, to advocacy more broadly. Which brings me to the title for this lightning talk, support or advocacy. I'm sorry to say I have no concrete answers, and perhaps there isn't a one-size-fits-all approach anyway. But what I thought I would do for the remainder of my talk is briefly run you through what the Profiles Working Group at Otago developed for our academics, and then I'd be keen to hear from you how you have approached this aspect of research support in your institutions. So I'm going to begin by saying that my unit here at the University of Otago Library is very small. There are four of us, so that's a manager and three research services librarians, and that means that offering a one-to-one -one service was not an option for us. So what we did is we developed some online content, which I'll show you now. Um, and that's in the form of LibGuide pages. And these LibGuide pages are part of our broader research publishing and impact guide. And we're slowly updating this guide in the build up um, to the next PBRI ref round here in Aotearoa. So with the kind approval of our colleagues up at Waikato, we adapted a online presence checklist um, that academics can, can download if they so choose. And we put that on the landing page here alongside a list of frequently asked questions that might help them. We then split the guide into two. So this is our page on um, the key researcher profiles that we're going to support academics with. And you'll see that that's Google Scholar profiles, ORCID IDs, Scopus author IDs, Web of Science researcher ID, and of course, the associated profiles that Scopus and Web of Science have with their IDs. We then developed a page on social media and academic networks, which we called Engage With Your Community. And this page contains more surface level information around some key academic networking sites, professional networking sites, and then Twitter and Facebook as the two sort of main social media platforms that academics might want to engage with. We did, however, decide to include a disclaimer on this page, and basically it says that the library is not responsible for the creation of, of academic network or social media accounts, and then we direct them to the, the social media policy that we have. We also do a sneaky plug for the institutional repository, our archive, um, as a better option, as a place to put their manuscripts in ResearchGate and academia.edu. So after the guide and resources were done and after I had run training sessions for my colleagues on the profiles that we will be supporting, the next step was to promote the new service in the staff bulletin email and via email sent directly to departmental contacts by our lovely subject librarians. We're also offering to come into departments to speak to staff about the resources we have created with a focus on those key profiles that we really want them to set up and sort out. So ORCID, Scopus, Researcher ID and Google Scholar Profile. These presentations are more about promoting the online resources and advocating for researchers to take ownership of their online presence than actively handholding them through the process of setting them up. So far, we've had minimal uptake on the offer of coming into the departments. We have four meetings lined up over the next six weeks, but we have had positive feedback about the checklist. So thank you, Jess Mel and everyone up at Waikato. So that's it from me. Thank you. And I look forward to hearing your feedback and your questions.